To illustrate the effect of all the different break types that you can insert into your document, I've created this little test document, which is a, a single page, a landscape orientation page, with two amber paragraphs at the top, which just contain the word before, repeated many times, and then two green paragraphs that contain the word after, repeated many times. And what I intend to do is insert a break at the start of the green text. So if I just zoom up so we can see what we're doing, and I'll tap just before the first after there, and we're on the insert ribbon, and we're gonna to go to the breaks menu. So first of all, we'll look at the page breaks category. So a page break is the most easy to understand, really. I'll just tap that to insert it. And now what's happened is after the before orange text, there's now a page break, and then a new page starts, and there's the green text. So if I just zoom back out so you can see that, there's page one, and then page two now has the green text on. So the effect of that page break is to force all the text after it onto the next page. The reason we can see the page break, by the way, and see these paragraph marks and all that is because in the home ribbon, I tapped the special characters mode button to be enabled. Okay, I'm gonna undo that change and we'll try a different type of break. So there we are, cursors before the after again there. And now I'm going to go to the breaks menu, um, another page break, but this time a column type. Now when I tap this, okay, it's called a column break, but it still seems to have just forced the green text onto a second page. But that's only because we're in a single column document. And the next column is effectively the start of the next page. So if I just undo that, and I'm going to switch this document into two column mode by going to the layout ribbon, columns, set it to two columns. So now there's my orange before, before, before paragraph, and there's my green after paragraph wrapping into the next column. So there's my cursor still before the after there. So now when we go to the insert ribbon, breaks, insert a page type column break. Now the green text is forced to the start of the next column. So there is a different effect when you are in multi-column mode. Okay, we'll undo that. And I'll undo the two column mode, and we're back to where we started. So let's try some section breaks then. So go back to the breaks menu. Let's start a new section at the next page. That's what that one means. So if I type that, again, it looks pretty similar to a page break so far. There's my before text, then there's a section break, brackets next page, and then all my text starts on the next page. So you might think, well, what's the benefit in that? Why didn't I just do a page break? Well, the point here is that sections can have different sort of layout properties and lots of things can change on different sections. So for example, with my cursor in this second section now, the green section, I could, for example, go to the layout and perhaps change the orientation of that page to portrait. And look, if I zoom out again so we can see, page one is still landscape because that's in the first section, which is landscape still. But this new section afterwards is where I change the orientation to portrait. And that's now an independent setting. So sections are powerful because they can have these independent settings for things like um, orientation, page size, columns, and various other settings. So that's quite handy. So let's undo that change again and undo the section break and we're back again to where we started. Back to the insert menu, insert breaks and let's look at the next type of section break, a continuous section break. If I try that, so it's inserted a section break of type continuous but nothing seems to have happened. The flow of the document is unbroken, nothing's changed but again anything in this new section now can have different properties. So if I, for example, go back to the layout, and maybe I'll change the columns now to two columns. Unlike before, when the entire document was affected, now only the section I'm in will be affected. So there we go. Section one with the before text in it is still a single column section. But after the section break, which is a continuous one, still flows through the page, section two is now a two column section. So that's the benefit of using continuous section breaks. Let's undo that again and undo the section break. Back to the insert ribbon, back to the breaks menu, 
and now we'll look at these two, even page, odd page. I'm going to choose even page first, so we're going to start a new section on effectively the next even page. Now as I scroll this document you'll see that a pop-up appears to tell you what page you're on, so as I scroll now on the first page you see it says page one, and as we scroll down and I get to predominantly on the second page there it says page two. And that's why the section break took us to that page two there. So that's easy to understand. I'm going to undo that and we'll now look at the, the odd page option. So insert a section break at the next odd page. And it looks the same. There's the before text, the section break to a next odd page, and then straight away what appears to be the next page is the green text again. But you see the difference when we scroll. So we're on page one, and now as I get to the next page, it's actually page three. So this only really takes effect on printout. So it's not showing you the blank page here, but when you print this out, this will appear on page one, then there will be a blank page, and this will then print out as page three. So these section breaks that always start on even pages or odd pages are handy for certain bounded book layouts where you always want your chapters to start on a particular side of the book, for example. Okay, so there you go. Hopefully that illustrates the effect of all of these different types of page break that you can insert into your Word document. Now, finally, I just want to show the difference between inserting a page break and inserting a page. So I'll just undo this to go back to where we were again. So as you recall, when we went to the breaks menu and inserted a page break, the text immediately after the page break starts on the next page. I'll just undo that. And this time, instead of inserting a break, I'm going to insert a page at the same place by tapping on the page button. And now you see uh, there's still a page break been inserted there, but when we scroll down past page one onto page two, you see that page two is a completely blank page. And then our text has been pushed onto the next page still, which is page three. So insert page has effectively added a complete blank page. You see the way it's done it. It's inserted a page break, left us a cursor ready to type, and then another page break to push the text onto a, a subsequent page. So that's the difference between inserting a page or inserting a page break.